So every year I read a little bit over a hundred books. Uh, most of which are audiobooks, a lot of which are uh, a lot of which are are like very much rereads for me. But I tend to read either way, whether rereads or new, I tend to read a little bit over a hundred books. As of recording, I've read about 108 books. And uh, most of the time, even with new books, I have a great experience. I, I can say that that I have a <clears throat> a really, really good a really, really good experience. I tend to choose books. I know I'm gonna like here and there. I will choose books I have um, here and there. I will choose books that I either have mixed opinions on or generally dislike, and and so on and so forth. And when I end up reading a bad book for whatever reason, uh, you know, so I, I I I I have a I have a hard time sometimes thinking that I am not wasting my time. I like I have the mindset that with the books I read, I'm not wasting my time because if if that's the case, if I am wasting my time, then what would be the point in reading, right? But when I pick up a book, like the one we're going to review today, it's really hard not to think I'm not wasting my time. And it, it, it makes it very difficult to, to like, just think that I may, I'm, I, I am having good use of my time. And the way I came up, I end up, uh, I ended up basically reading this book was because, it's because I'm, I'm reading, I'm listening to a podcast I recently found where you get, um, it is called Read Me Romance. And by the way, despite the book review I'm going to give this, I do recommend that podcast. It's a really good podcast. And I am someone who believes in access to literature. So I do recommend this. But Read Me Romance is a podcast that, uh, where it is hosted by an author duo and they um, they basically uh, play audiobooks for romance novellas. So these are pretty much pretty short. Each episode is like an hour and some and some time. So these are like more like short stories than novellas. So uh, so I'm at a lot of time. I don't know what book I'm gonna be reading until I look at the the episode. So these are books I didn't necessarily pick up or books that I normally wouldn't pick up otherwise. And this one came up, and the. You know, the concept seemed interesting. I was weirdly, I was like, I, I had my, I had some, I had some doubts when I got the, when I, when I saw the, the, the concept because this, this is a bit too much for me. Like, I think for me, as I read it, I was, as I read it, it kind of confirmed my suspicions that something, that this wasn't going to be very good when it came to disability representation. And I was right. So yeah, when I read a book like this, it's really difficult not to think I'm wasting my time. But I'm not wasting my time because while this book, in my opinion, was terrible in a couple of different ways, I will, I do want to use it as a jumping off point to talk about disability representation in a general stance and my thoughts on it and how I think it can be better. It's really not that hard to make disability representation good it's not that difficult and when i read books like this i want i i i often wonder if the people writing these books just are using it as some kind of as like uh, the plot device to give the characters too much of a problem it's really not that hard to make disability um to make disability representation work it's really not just like it's not that hard to make good queer representation uh in in any case and i will talk about that first we're going to i'm going to review the book first i'm going to read the synopsis and then i'm going to review the book quick thing to note here is that <clears throat> if you felt represented by this book that's great i i'm i'm happy for you i'm only giving an opinion on general disability representation um, and also, it, I, I will not, I can't say that this is an, I can't say or, uh, or not say that this is an accurate representation of a person who is deaf because, well, I'm not. So if you would like to find out, I would suggest looking up reviews, especially of, for reviews made by someone who is deaf. Because uh, I don't, I'm not going to say this is accurate. I'm only going to give you the opinion as to how 
it read to me, which is entirely different to how someone else in the community might see it. So based on the way I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it the way I read, I read it, whether I read that it was like, whether it felt like it was handled well, or whether it felt insensitive, spoiler alert, it read insensitive to me, but I'm going to give you my opinions on that. But please note that I can't say with uh, certainty that this was accurate representation of someone in this situation. I just want to lay that out there before we begin the the review because yeah, I have some thoughts and this book made me angry. I this is the second time I'm recording this and um I I still feel a certain amount of anger with this uh <laughs> with this book. So we're going to do what we can. And I, I'm going to just give you my thoughts. So here is the synopsis. <clears throat> Being a billionaire is fantastic until it's not. I command my world, but I can't buy the two things I want. The woman I desire and a miracle. Neither are for sale and both are out of my reach. I'm 100% in love with with my best friend's sister. I have been for years and she just told me she's moving away. Like heck she is, not without me. I've been her rock for the past six years. She needs me. Okay, I need her just as much. The other thing, the miracle, the miracle? My girl thinks she's broken because she can't hear. To me, she's perfect. But because I would give everything to heal her, she thinks I only want to fix her. She couldn't be more wrong. She's my world exactly as she is. Now, I just need to convince her of that before it's too late. Now, I want to start by saying that this book is 74 pages. And uh, as I, when I, again, when I heard this concept, I was half interested and half doubtful because I didn't feel this was going to capture what it, it, it's, it's being, what it wants to capture, if you will. So I very much felt like this was just not going to work out very well. And I <clears throat> was right, especially in such a short amount of time not that it can't be done in a short amount in a short uh in a short space it absolutely can um the story that um one of the stories that i am writing um a, a romance actually that i am writing which has a disabled character as the lead she is my character is blind i've talked about it a little bit her name is eve and this is for the voice in my dreams i was able my first draft was about uh, well, my second draft, let's say, but like my first draft was technically about 20 pages ish, maybe a little bit more. This in my in my second draft was about 43 pages. So it can be done. I think the problem is that you can um, you need it more space was needed because of the way this was written. But also, it just I don't think it would have helped but let's start let's just start from basics so generally the main compliment i will give this book is that the prose is good the prose is good it is definitely readable i mean i got through it and i hated this book i got through it um so the prose is good the um the other compliment i'll give this is I kind of appreciate the weird inver the inver the inversion of the virgin trope, which is usually where the woman is the virgin and the guy has somehow slept with a bunch of women, but this time they're both virgins. I appreciate that to an extent because uh, I don't like the way this turned out. So I only appreciate that to an extent um, because um, that man is just a nightmare. So I appreciate I appreciate it, but not with, but not to the extent that I would have if it was a good romance. So that those were like the two compliments I will give this this book. Now let's start tearing it apart. It is told in two point of views. It's told in the dude's point of view, whose name I don't remember, and the woman's point of view, who I remember her name being Rowena. I'm pretty sure her name is Rowena. 
We're gonna just call her Rowena, and if I'm wrong, whatever. <laughs> I don't care enough to be right. So it is told in their point of view. It is first person, which it works because they're like the main character. They're the only characters really in this uh, in this book. Other people are mentioned. Her brothers show up at the end, but they're not that important. So like it, it, it works, you know, it works. It's fine. This part is fine. Um, it is, I think, I can't remember if it was past or present. Forgive me. I read this a couple months ago and I, no, I'm sorry, not months ago, a couple weeks ago. It was last month that I read it for me. So forgive my lack of memory on this and uh, and everything. So yeah, this was kind of my my uh, my thing with that. Like it was just that part was fine. The romance terrible, terrible. This romance is terrible. It is supposed to be a best friends to lovers, and I find it insulting to best friends to lovers. Or not a best friends. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be a, a friends to lovers, and I find this part insulting to friends to lovers. Friends to lovers deserve better than whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> so the story, uh, it is it is just, it's not, it's just, um, it happens really quickly. And I mean really quickly to the point where the next day after they have sex, they're married, or at least hours after they have sex, they're, they fly to Vegas and they're married. That is how fast this whole thing happens. Like, there is no development for romance. We know that they feel uh, the same for each other, including Rowena knows that. Uh, like, th that she feels that for him. Like, it's told on, it's told to us on page that they feel something, but I felt no chemistry between them, especially with them as characters. As characters, none of them are developed. It could be argued that the guy is a little bit more developed, but we'll talk about him slightly. He doesn't even, none of them go through an arc. Um, they'd go through nothing. I'm not saying you necessarily have, I, I feel like you should go through an arc in a romance novel, but that's just my thought. But in a short story, you have a limited amount of space. You don't necessarily have to go through a complete arc, but I, I would definitely do more than what was done here. I, 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 I just can't. So I felt no chemistry between them. Like the chemistry was not jumping off the page at all. It just felt kind of eh. It was just like, yeah, they exist. So they're in love. Uh, I hope you understand kind of deal. That is what it felt like to me. I don't, I didn't find these people uh, romantic. Somehow, <clears throat> somehow, you guys. Somehow I find more chemistry in um, Tess and Q from Monsters in the Dark, which I have been reviewing. I'll link the, the reviews I've done so far on that uh, below. And that is dark romance. And I find more chemistry with them than I do with, these two and this is supposed to be sweet romance though speaking of dark romance i will say that while this seems like it's supposed to be sweet romance it does tiptoe into dark romance it does kind of tiptoe in it and that's making it really unhealthy usually sweet romance is healthy from the ones i've read anyway it is pretty healthy the only issues usually is miscommunication which is the worst way for an author to i think make 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 a point so when it comes to to why they don't tell each other that they that they like each other it's one of the worst ways in my opinion but that's just me so that's my thought with that the pacing is too quickly which too fast too quickly what the hell <laughs> the pacing is too fast which makes it a problem for the story because uh it, it, everything just happens so quickly everything just happens like really really fast um, there are themes here of disability and insecurity and, uh, I would say give you a content warning here for controlling and possessive behavior because this is not good. Now we're going to move on here to the characters and again, none of them really go through an arc and one could argue that the guy has more of a character, but that's only because of the fact that his personality is clearer on the page than Rowena's and that's the only reason and, and and that's it that's it nothing else now we have to move on to spoilers so I can talk about why I absolutely hate this book and why I am now hate reviewing this book because uh I like the concepts but everything turned out just bad to, for me so let's talk about 
why I dislike this this uh, this book. Okay. All right. So we start off the book with Rowena and this dude meeting at a coffee shop, and she gives him the news that she's moving. And from the outset, we know that he has feelings for her. From the outset, like there is no pretending for that. But he, throughout the story, oh God. Okay, let me start. I'll, I'll tell you how he sounds later, but um, in a minute. But like, here's what happens. So we find that out and that she's moving and he's not willing to let her go because... He loves her. And we all want a controlling dude who's not willing to let us go because they love us, right? So he he um so he basically like uh just just like is um asks her since so she's like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go somewhere, like I wanna move. And she asks, Hey, and he asks, Where are we going? She's like, No, like she's the only one that's moving or whatever. And he <laughs> He kind of, eventually they decide to talk about it like some other time they have to meet and she has to go to work or whatever. They're going to meet for their usual breakfast or whatever it was. Throughout this conversation, I believe it's through this conversation, um, but at some point, just in case it's not, at some point we learn that he, as it said in the uh, synopsis, has been her rock. That her family sort of treats her like an invalid. Uh, the words of the story, not mine uh and and that he and that you know when she she turned uh she became deaf after some kind of like virus or something like it, it people thought it was gonna be the doctors thought it might be temporary but it like never left and like she just randomly woke up being un and unable to hear that's it and they thought it might, be, it might be temporary because some kind of infection or something. And then it just never left. So she's had to get used to it. It's been like six years. And I, um, I went like, okay, this doesn't sound too bad. Though the beginning of the story gives me some, some questions about his behavior and everything else. But eventually he, uh, she needed someone to talk to or whatever. And he kind of became that person. Uh, she was like a junior in high school. And I think he was out of high school at the time and um so he was working or whatever so he started like driving her to, to high school and talking to her and they started talking they even learned sign language together which in any other story by the way this would be really cute in this one it just makes me mad um but they started learning sign language together he even um like for uh arranged his schedule so that he would have a break when she would get out of school so he could pick her up so you know they've been close and and you know she he's she he basically became kind of like the person that she needed to talk to and um like i'm sorry she became the per he became the person that would talk to her without judgment and by the way i want to say those are some of the best people um, that you could talk to, like people without judgment, people who don't don't necessarily pretend to understand you, but will listen to you. And even if they say that, even even if they say I understand, even if they don't, it's like a it's a bit comforting. So I understand because I am blind, and I know that when I talk to certain people, I only prefer talking to certain people because these people are both not judgmental and they're a little bit more objective. So this on its face isn't bad. Um, he also, I think unbeknownst to her, kind of defended her. He got, I think, uh, I think he got expelled or something or suspended because in middle school or he, or for, as a freshman, he um, got into a fight because people, I think someone said something bad about her or whatever. And um, so he has been having his feelings for her for some time. So again, on its face, on its face this isn't bad this is good but the problem is that the framing of the narrative after that is that he's not willing to let her go because he loves her but the framing of it makes it sound like the reason that he's not letting her go is because she owes him for what he did now let me explain there are parts of the story actually no let me say throughout the entire story he sounds like a controlling, possessive 
asshole. And he is the person. He is the person that I, I, um, there would no, there would not be a nice breakup. Like, he's the person I would find, uh, I would, I would, uh, I would be really unhappy with. Like, I, I would, I would hate this person with a passion. I, I do not like this kind of person. But throughout the story, he, he does sound like a controlling asshole. A controlling, possessive asshole. He, he, it's like he wants to control her movements. And at some point, it really feels like she... Because she does give in to everything he wants. Um, it's almost like her opinions don't matter. I feel like the author did want to make, give her, let her have some agency to a degree, but it just wasn't written well. And at some point, it literally reads like she gives in to what he wants because she's just tired and she just wants it to stop. And it is really sad. So, yeah, I, I just... Um, I just can't, I can't, I can't. It was, it was terrible. Um, but he, so yeah, it makes it sound like he owes her something. Like literally part of, part of it's like, like, I don't, I like, I've been her rock. Like hell is she leaving without me or like, or stuff like that. There's also another point of this in the story where she, where he, he says, um, like he, that the reason he never told her that he felt he had feelings for her is because he wanted her to spread her wings but not so far that she would be leaving the town or that she would be away from him no no no. that's not that far just far enough just a controlled a controlling a controlled spread of wings if you will um there are also parts of the story there's even a part of the story where um and this is disgusting um he he tells her like um well, when, when they're about to have sex, he does, and after she confesses her feelings, and they confess her feelings to each other, uh, and you find out basically they're both virgins. Uh, he's, he's like, if we do this, it's forever, or whatever, and, like, it, it's gonna be us forever, and, and everything. And he eventually just makes her, like, literally forces her in a way to get married and and, and also he literally just says like I want to marry her and impregnate and impregnate her with my kid so she basically has no choice but to stay this is disgusting it is disgusting like I listen I uh my next review my next book review is going to be misery and uh this is more disgusting than misery and misery is violent as fuck Misery involves a kidnapping where the woman breaks a man's legs with a sledgehammer. And I find that more lighthearted than whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> that should tell you something. It should. It really, really should. Anywho, this is honestly horrifying. Like, I, I prefer Stephen King's Misery. It is technically in the horror genre. But I wouldn't consider it horror compared to this. I consider it a breath of fresh air, honestly, compared to this. <laughs> oh God, okay. So throughout the story, that's a thing. So that was a thing that happens. Now, as he sounds like a controlling asshole, we're not gonna go too deep into the details of the story because I don't remember everything little little details all the time right now because I read it weeks ago and this story has been living rent free in my head and I just want to get it out of my head so that I can move on to better books which are going to be my next two reviews. Thank the gods. Now, um, but there is a theme of insecurity and disability curing and... Um, the idea that you owe people something that it, those are the themes that are cut or I've caught in this story. So let's talk about those things and let's talk about how they kind of uh, come up in the story and I think better ways to write them. But first, I'm going to take a small uh, I'm going to have to do something really quickly. So I'll be right back. So, uh, yeah, I just I just I. Uh, I just, I need to do something. So for now, uh, enjoy this uh, little advertisement from me for uh, my services. Before we get into the advertisement, a few things. First of all, the review mentioned here that I said I would be linking uh, in the description is currently not out yet. It will be out probably 
uh, in a few weeks, I would hope, but it is not currently out. Uh, and second, please do not trust the schedule that I have set out in this review. Uh, I have changed my review schedule and um, so uh, other reviews will probably be coming out uh, in, in a different, uh, different schedule. I should never, ever again say, what review I will be, uh, uh, what what book reviews I will be reviewing, unless it's gonna be in the edits. Okay, now before we continue on to the video, if you have enjoyed the content here so far, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you're aware of my uh, videos. If you would like to support me, there are a couple of ways you can do that besides subscribing. Check out my blog if you're interested in my writing. You will find a few. We will find a lot of things on my website, but also if you are uh, interested in in that, I uh, you can also support me uh, financially through Ko-fi with a one-time donation, hire me for commissions, or checking out my books. Um, I, currently, uh, I currently have two books out as of recording of this video. And uh, if you are into fantasy, um, I have uh, my debut, Daughter of Death, which is the first in the Child of Death series. And um, you should check that out because the second book, The Beginning of Us, is coming out soon. I am currently in the process of working on it. And I'm hoping to get it out to you by 2025. But it will be coming out soon, so definitely check it out. And then this uh, second book, If Poetry is More Your Vibe, I do have a poetry collection called Pieces of Me, available in all major retailers. While Daughter of Death is not available on Amazon, you can find Pieces of Me there. If you are interested in hiring me as a freelancer, I do offer services through Ko-fi. Um, I offer beta reading and poetry uh, writing services. If you uh, would like, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. If Ko-fi is not your thing, I also accept uh, DMs on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is in the description, so if you are looking to message me on Instagram for any of my services, feel free to go there, message me, and I will get back to you as soon as I can, um, and I'm more than happy to work with you. And with that out of the way, let us return to our regularly scheduled program. Okay, I have returned. Thank you so much for listening to the ad. Um, hopefully I did well for this one. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so now listen I I will say now that we're talking about this representation and about insecurity and so on and so forth how this kind of goes into representation now I think it is important to write the stories of people with disabilities who felt uh, like their journey who maybe felt the insecurity who or feel the insecurity and who maybe want to see it on paper I think that's important but I also think it's equally as important to write stories about people with disabilities experiencing joy and happiness and unfortunately there are very few stories with that have them experiencing joy happiness and love and so on very very few like it's it, especially in romance which is a genre at least I haven't seen this many in romance. I could be wrong. If I am, that's good. Maybe there are more. But very few. St I have seen very few stories, especially in romance, that I, it, it, which is a genre I read a lot, um, that show people with disabilities having a, a really good, um, a really good, uh, um, uh like just just being normal people and, 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 and having a really great love story. There are very few. And I say romance because romance as a genre is a genre that attempts to, by the end, you're suppo it's supposed to be uplifting and make you feel kind of really happy. And it does deliver hope in the form of love, particularly romantic love. And that's fine. So... Um, I just wanted to state that before I start because I think it is just as important and unfortunately this character doesn't get the joy. So um, throughout the story we, we know um, she it's a bit inconsistent because she wants the problem is that it's inconsistent. She both do, wants to be loved for who she is without any judgment of her disability but she also wants but she also kind of uh, seems like she would want to want a, a cure for it. 
um, at the same time, which I think you can have both. It's just that the way it was written is weird. Um, it, 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 uh, the, the way it was written is weird. That's the point. Because there's a point in time in the story, and I'll explain why it's weird by using this scene as to illustrate my my issue with the way it was written. Not that, you know, people can't have that. It's just the way it was written in the story. So the way it was written, here's a scene. After everything, after their first time, after, the, after they confess their feelings, after their first time having sex or whatever, and he's trying to get her to, and he, and he eventually, uh, well, not eventually gets her to marry him, but like before he gets her to marry him, they have this conversation about, kids and also about they have it, conversations about like her not being uh, perfect because she can't fit into his circles like he needs someone to fit into his circles and he's like I mean I have enough money that I don't even have to show up I don't care about that right but then it comes to the conversation of children and how she won't be able to hear them or whatever and how and it, it kind of talks about how she want she seems to want a like she 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 hates she seems to hate that she can't hear and so on and so forth or whatever and she says and he offers to see another doctor she's like we've already seen them she's like we can see more doctors right um and then she overreacts over this and says that he just wants to fix her now keep in mind that she brought this up and that she is the one talking about this in a way that makes it seem as though she's broken. And he's only offering her the idea of seeing more doctors. Now listen, this man is a possessive, controlling asshole. And he's the kind of person I would want to punch in the face. But I can't blame him for this one. <laughs> I'm being nuanced, you guys. You should be proud. But yeah, she's the one who uh, basically made it this way. While he's just offering her the doctor so she may want to see if she wants to see it that way. But she starts seeing it as him wanting to fix her. Which, while he is a controlling asshole who the narrative frames as though she owes him something and he seems to believe that she does because he, he's trying to control her every move. He really is in this in this scene only offering her what she wants. And that irritates me because here's the thing. I think I know what the author was going for. So <clears throat> um, Rowena lost her hearing at age 15. She so old enough that she would remember this and old enough that she would feel out of place if she lost her uh, her if she if she that she lost her hearing and basically became disabled. I know someone who I know people who lost their vision older and maybe feel or felt that way before. Like that is a thing that's going to happen because when you are when you for your entire life are someone who sees or someone who has like you know who's able bodied and randomly loses their disability. You know, it's or their or their ability to to be you know able bodied and just become disabled. It's going to be a a transition. It's going to be a transitional period, but it it has also been six years and she is young now. My ish, my thing is that yes, you could feel. I think they could feel. They could still feel very probably insecure about their disability because they didn't want it. That is very much possible, um, but. It, it seems to me like in this story, she, I think the author was trying to portray her to be kind of independent, though her family treats her almost like a child-ish or like, or even like they don't fully treat her like the, the, the adult that she is. Uh, and, and they, and they uh, I guess, use the disability as an excuse. I, I know that because I, I, I get that sometimes. So, but she also works at a school with, deaf children which suggests that she knows how to work around things that would normally uh like that would involve not hearing and that would normally involve like the the um the the uh like the, that would involve hearing like she would know how to work around it seems it feels to me like she would know how to work around it and around things that would make things very difficult for her 
um, in that in those situations, considering that she works with them. The only reason she would not know what to do is if her family sort of locked her in or she locked herself in, uh, refusing to learn. I know someone who lost their vision as an adult who did absolutely uh, like kind of locked themselves in and didn't and, and didn't learn uh, the the important things that I think I would know like they don't have they don't have good o m skills like I do uh, or mobility they don't have they don't they, they don't do everything that like they don't do things as normally as I would I, I know that. And it's been years, but she's still like this um, for whatever reason. Um, and so I know someone like this. And I, 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 don't, um, I don't pretend to understand why they did it, but I know someone that is like this. I, I think the problem I have here is just exactly what I've, I've said. Like, it, it doesn't, it makes no sense as to um, why she would react like this when, um, like the insecurity just isn't written well. And so it, so it, it becomes really, really inconsistent where she's like, I want someone to love me for me without judgment, but I also feel like I'm broken. It becomes inconsistent, not because this is, these are feelings that people don't have, but because the author didn't take much time to establish her as a character and establish her insecurities and her feelings and how she would react to things. And instead, the entire story is written out. It honestly, it reads very much like inspiration porn. We will talk about it later. Um, it, it is written out as him being her hero and as like he is the one who who has fixed her and made her feel right about herself and oh no she has nothing to worry about now like that is how it's written in general it is written in a very insensitive way where she as a character has no agency he is somehow fixing all her problems with disability even though she reacts like a certain way so let's 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 talk about how this could be written better way better now because yes Disability can bring a lot of insecurities. I myself can attest to that fact. I, as a child, went through uh, went through bull bullying. You know, I went through a, a certain amount of bullying, and um, I I I felt the the insecurity that came with it. I felt the whole like why why me? Why am I different? Why why are they doing this to me? I remember crying a lot, and I remember um asking people about it and a lot of what I got was it's gonna be okay it's not your fault or whatever which wasn't the most helpful thing all the time but I you know I was a kid so of course they're not gonna tell me directly all that stuff and and it didn't help when I had to wear sunglasses which felt like I was hiding um thankfully I don't wear them anymore um and it didn't help my self-esteem was basically at an all-time low I completely understand that and I think that the author was trying to go for it it's just that it was not well established now ways that i think this could be written better what are the ways to do that first you need to establish her as a character we need to see her in because we only see one chapter or part of a chapter of her no like one chapter of her at her job doing something regular and that she picks up like and that she drives and picks up like food or whatever and and stuff like that we like we see her do some we barely see it but we need to see her do regular things away from him we need to see her in her regular life first of all and maybe we need to see her talk more in depth about how she feels and how she um <coughs> and how she and how the, maybe the, maybe it's not even just her it's maybe the way the world is making her feel because we're going to talk about that too because that can happen maybe talk about a little bit of the challenges and stuff like that now i don't necessarily think by the way that you necessarily need to explore disability in your stories. But if you're gonna put disability in the stories and make it that it, it bothers them, you do need to explore them. And that was the problem here. The, sto the story was too short for this kind of ambitious exploration and it just became a very, it just became, a, it just started, it just became very, very bad. So maybe we see her maybe reflect on how maybe society made it made her feel about it, how other people around her made her feel about it, and maybe this is why she feels insecure, because that is a thing. You could want a cure, or you could want to see, because others around you could make you feel like you are not like them. So you want 
it to be so you want it so that you don't feel that way i mean it's been six years so she was like i think 15 or 16 i'm thinking i think it was 15 i could be wrong so let's if we're going with 15 she's 21 now that is still possible that is still the feeling that's possible it's possible that she would want a cure because other people have made her feel like it it would be it's she's not the same and because other people treat her differently uh, as mentioned in the story, maybe we can use that element to explain that she would want to be treated like she used to. Maybe part of the insecurity is that she used to be different. I It's like, I used to be like my brothers. I used to be like... Um, like my mom, I used to be like everyone else, but then I lost my hearing and suddenly I'm being treated like a child and I'm being treated like I was not a person. Maybe that is the root of her insecurity, which it feels like that would be it. Like it feels like it would make sense based on the element of the story. And then we just need to establish and show that. So maybe show moments with her family where they do treat her that way. Show how other people would react to her. People who know her particularly, but even people who don't know her, but know that she's deaf, how they would react to her. Show people, show different people in different areas. And then he, and then she, have them start out as friends, um, uh, as they would and maybe she just goes to him here and there and she complains to him about this stuff and Meanwhile, maybe first of all if I were writing this I take away the controlling asshole part of us because this is tiptoeing too close to dark romance dark romance isn't bad But uh, if you're gonna write a sweet romance make it sweet have him be more more of a more of a supportive person have him be more of a supportive person right and she maybe she 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 tells him about her problems and she complains about how people are treating her maybe she's crying maybe she is detailing like yeah i would want this for these reasons and i would i would want it but i also know i can't fix that there is no cure and now i have to deal with this but people aren't letting me maybe have her complain about all that and he is going to be someone who's listening and someone who is providing her support like hey what can i do do you want to stay over do you want to do you want to go out i could do this for you like have him more like be a support system who offers her um that kind of that kind of uh um that kind of like um uh, what's that called um stability that kind of stability that she doesn't have with family or even friends if you want or at least not all her friends but also make it that there are people in her life who do support her like he does don't make him the only person because that would just be annoying but so don't make him the only person but definitely have him be one of her uh stable supportive people right and then you will write that yes maybe they do feel that way but they haven't confessed for whatever reason or another and then have their relationship uh, build slowly that is a way to do it that I think would make more sense and that would not read as much like inspiration porn it is important that when we write disability representation we don't make it sound like inspiration porn so that is the issue those that is the way to write it so let's talk about disability representation now and how um how I've seen it represented my general stance on it and all that fun stuff now again as I said before, I think it is important that people with disabilities get different stories told, not just their journey of disability and not just their, uh, not just how they overcome everything. We need stories, we need more diverse stories of people with disabilities who, <coughs> who actually do it, uh, who actually have normal lives, who have a normal who have a very, very much a life like everyone else and who also uh, experience joy as well as, you know, the sadness. But we need more stories that show them experiencing joy and having a real life. We need those stories. We deserve those stories too. It's not just everybody people that deserve those. We deserve those stories. We deserve power fantasies like and stuff like that as well. We need more diverse sources of disabilities. We can't just have this idea of um of people who uh, of just of people who are just going through a journey and 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 and, and just writing all the sadness of, of, of it i think those stories are important but i also think they have been told 
a lot and some of them haven't even been told well so we need more we need more good stories more diverse stories about this stuff so that is my general stance on disability representation but let's talk about also how disability kind of my theory of how of what happens and how disability is why disability is usually represented like this so let's talk about first the uh, models of disability now we have two there is the social and then there is the medical model of disability so the, uh, let's start talking with the social model of disability. The social, uh, actually no, let's start talking about the medical model. The medical model of disability is one where uh, that suggests that people who have disabilities need to be cured. They need to be fixed and they need, you know, we need to do what we can as a society to fix them or whatever. But it also says that society does not need to accommodate you as a person with disability. It says that, society needs to that you basically need to accommodate to what society has and they have and they do not need to make it <coughs> make any changes for you um this unfortunately does lead to disability stereotypes which is how i think uh this is where i think the media has gotten this uh the disability representation the way it has although it might be getting slightly better uh, there are some good representations of disabilities, which I will talk about. I want to do a little bit of recommendation of good disability representation in, by the end. But um, yeah, so this is this is kind of where that comes from. Unfortunately, this has led to some disability stereotypes, things like the um, well, uh, this is not much of a stereotype, but it kind of is. But it is the, the dark sunglasses with, with the white cane. This is not, there are people who actually have this, but I consider, I say, I say it as a stereotype because it became a thing, a really big thing for some reason. And then there's the one uh, with, uh, for, at least this is for blind people that I, that I know of, by the way, but there, there is the one with, um, that you like touch faces to know who people are. That's a really bad one. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> um, <clears throat> There are there are a bunch of different stereotypes for every disability, but like the more general stereotype for that I've seen <coughs> for disability in general is the the story kind of goes that they that they have lost their disability for whatever reason, or I'm sorry, they they are disabled for whatever reason, and then they they we basically see them struggle, and we see as though like they can't seem to be able to do anything with out a, a per, an able-bodied person around and that and then and then the story goes that we basically see them struggle and go through all this stuff and then at some point they get cured now this is uh because they also are put on the other part is that they're usually put on a pedestal where it's like listen like your life could be so much worse like it could be worse than what than what it is um like you, you you should basically be grateful in that form this is inspiration porn inspiration porn is a phrase coined by <clears throat> stella young i am going to link her wonderful ted talk in the description that she did um for i think it was a, a 2012 ted talk um or something <coughs> if i find it I'm going to link her TED talk An inspiration porn is the object is the objectifying of people with disabilities. So usually again, this becomes with them. We see their journey as they struggle and somehow get out of that struggle, eventually even get cured. But also we, we are, they're put on a pedestal and, the, and even other characters are very inspired by, by these people. And it is meant to inspire you as the viewer i am sorry but i don't live my life to inspire you i have issues just like you um so I, that's not why i live my life however like my life is lived for me i don't live to inspire people i don't i don't care about inspiring people that's fucking annoying um so that's kind of where it where it goes and this story reads like inspiration porn because that's kind it, it does a version of this Molly Burke talked a little bit about this too. Uh, I will link her video if I can find it as well. 
But basically, inspiration porn is not the just the objectifying in the way that we see them through images or 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 like or or stories, but it's also the idea that if you ask, say, the example that Molly Burke used, if I remember in her video, was let's say that if if she was asked to prom and uh and and she would have said yes she said she said no but she if she would have said yes it would have been like it could have been like oh my god you're taking that girl to prom that's so nice of you that is also a form of inspiration porn because it's basically saying that the other person is kind of like a hero who is taking the poor disabled girl out on a date so it makes it look as though if he did not ask you wouldn't have found your own date which by the way no not good okay not good <laughs> so that's kind of where that goes <clears throat> that is kind of where why it all looks kind of like this right that is why we 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 don't um that's why we we uh, you know i hate these things right that's why so that is where the medical model of disability kind of leads and that is where a lot of the stereotypes come in and the media perpetuates a lot of bad disability representation and insensitive ones as well. Bad ones include, in my view, um, well, this one, this one. Um, and then this novella I watched called La Fuerza del Destino, which had a blind character. I fucking hated it or hated that part of it anyway. It felt insensitive to me. So bad work. Um, whoever created that novella, bad job. Um, <clears throat> so that is, it also kind of leads to, I think another one maybe would be Bird Box, although Bird Box didn't really have blind characters, but people kind of took it that way because of the whole uh, blind school by the end. It, it, it wasn't meant to be, I think, representation for for blind people, even in the movie. Uh, I don't think it was supposed to. The book did a better job, of course, but I don't think it was supposed to. Um, so those are things. Now the social model of disability is more um, more accommodating to us. The social model of disability is one that basically says that society, it is not our, our, it's not our, our need to change. It's a society needs to change for us and it needs to accommodate us. And these changes can come in small ways, like adding braille signs to, to classrooms, uh, or to like, or to doors and having, making accessible, uh, elevators, may, uh, having wheelchair accessibility in your buildings, having it so that you make make sure you have walking elevators, having accessible bathrooms, having accessible websites. Like these are really easy things that you can do to make so the to uh, um, achieve the social model of disability. This is a model that I very much subscribe to. The medical bottle is broken and should die. But this is the one that we, I think, uh, we should definitely aim for. The I don't see all the time anymore a lot of stories with people with disabilities because, um, not because I don't want to, but because I have to look for them and I usually don't seek them out. And because I generally, they're not fully presented to me. I've seen a few and I've seen, I've seen a, a uh, um, I've seen, I've seen really interesting ones here and there, right? But I've seen good and I've seen bad. But generally, my stance is that, listen, we all need to see ourselves in media. I think it's good for everyone to be able to see themselves in the stories that they consume. And that would, because we, as people who, <clears throat> if we see each other, we see, we see ourselves. One, it makes us feel less alone. It makes us feel like we, it makes us, it makes it, it makes us feel like we, we are not alone. We are not the only ones who have this, um, who have, who are going through this. We are not the only people who, who have this disability and feel like this. And two, it does humanize us to other people and other people might be able to uh, feel because I think uh, from what I have heard, I have not fully researched this, but people who have researched this in videos who talk about reading have mentioned how it like developed more, it, it, it uh, reading, especially uh, reading, but probably stories in general, but I've heard mainly for reading is that it, it offers more, uh, it gives us more uh, empathy 
um, and, and, and it makes it makes us more more empathetic. And I believe that to be the case. I think stories generally can make us more empathetic. And the way to do that is to give good representations of people and to see more and to see more people being represented and to be able to see ourselves both to see ourselves and feel like hey we're, we're, we're good like we're not we're not alone and also to have other people see us for who we are and be able to see the best representations of us now i am not saying by the way i do want to make this very clear i am not saying that <clears throat> you need to have all good uh, like you need to have only one type of character like for example I'm not saying that your blind character needs to be nice all the time like you could have an evil blind character but have that evil blind character be a person have that that per that that blind character be a um be a regular person just like your able-bodied villains would be except don't you know just don't make it except that they're blind but don't make the blindness a a huge deal the the best way to represent disability and really any uh any group that or anything i've seen generally is it's really easy it's really really easy here here's the secret you guys here it is ready three two one person first disability second that means you develop their character their personality whoever the hell they are but the disability is just something that's there because some disability is not the full identity of a person and unfortunately a lot of bad representation like this story does make it so that disability becomes their entire identity. It's like they have nothing else except being disabled. And that is not what we want. We want fully realized characters, whether they're disabled or not. So the best way to do it is to have their disability be the second and the least important part. Have them have a personality and have them be a, um, <clears throat> have them be a, a person first and disabled second and if their disability gets challenges you can put them in but make sure that they also have have that personality because yes disability is challenging it is challenging um and also remember that when you write you don't necessarily have to fully explore the disability um but if you're going to start with an exploration on that disability then i think it is your responsibility to fully explore it and and not leave it there to make it some plot device uh, for for conflict. I think if you're gonna use it as a plot device for conflict, you then you need to explore that and, exp and, and show how it becomes a problem and, and why it's becoming a problem. A good example of this is Kiss Quotient or the Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. It's just, it's very good with that. I would definitely recommend it. I'll link my review below. Um, so that, that's my, those are my general stances. And again, we need more diverse stories of disabilities where people are also experiencing joy and it's not just their journey. So we need more, uh, like disability representation, uh, that is just a person being disabled and going through a story. For example, I am currently still editing this, but I, um, hopefully, hopefully by the time this is out, I'll have it released. Uh, unfor it'll be under a pen name because of uh, the different genre, but for example, I am writing, <clears throat> I'm editing my romance, The Voice in My Dreams, and I have a blind character who is fully independent, and she is very much someone who is, is not, I don't, I wouldn't consider her the stereotypical blind person, but she's also like very independent, and I say stereotypical blind person because that's what the media places, not because uh, because the, the, the stereotypical media blind person, how about that? Because the media doesn't always do a good job with this stuff. Uh, but it's not the one that you will see all the time in the media. She's very independent. She is very, uh, very much, she very much knows herself. I do explore disability in it, but I, 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 it's, it's a second thing. She just happens to be independent and she just happens to be blind. And it is really the life, you know, that I, I live. I am someone who I am someone who is blind and happens to be independent. And I know other blind people who are very independent. They have work, they go to school, they they do their lives like nothing else. And that is what I wanted to come across. 
and that is that I something. So if if the, hopefully the book is out by the time I I, I put, bring this out, or at least it's in pre order. But I I do hope that when when that book comes out, it is in the it is a romance. I do hope that when people see that it. It's very, it'll become, it, it'll maybe like, maybe inspire others to do more really, really good representations because that is what we need. We need, we need better representation than what, than, than what we've gotten uh, so far. So those are my thoughts on that. Now, let me give you some recommendations where you can find good disability representation um, that is written well and it's not written insensitively. I've mentioned it before, but The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Um, Avatar The Last Airbender, which is very well known for having an awesome blind character, but also just a really good, um, there's another uh, disability I think represented, but I can't quite remember, but generally really awesome blind character. C is, uh, the Apple original C also has a cast of blind characters, um, and they're really, really well written. Uh, another one, uh, since we, we've mentioned the, the character, um, in the story is deaf and the next two that i want to i want to recommend the last two are the dragon prince uh, also on netflix original and coda which is a, an apple original and there you those are very good places to look for good disability representation hopefully this list will help i'm not giving I'm, i i decided not to mention what these were about very much because but i think you can find them i will link anything i have reviewed of these recommendations below so make sure to check my description i'm pretty sure it'll be full of links um and with that i will uh yeah that's it honestly this story i don't remember how i what i rated it i'm pretty sure i, I rated it one star um and uh yeah it just wasn't good but hey it's okay next time next time we'll have a good review next time we'll talk about about misery and i'm glad that i got all my thoughts out because this damn story has been living rent free in my head for weeks and um i need space for better um so now back to future me with her with whatever final thoughts that she that I have and, and whatever whatever they have to say about everything I've just said. Um, so take it away, future me. Okay, so I know that this video is long enough. Uh, hello and uh, thank you for making it to the other side. But I also wanted to very quickly say um, another reason that we really, really need diverse representation of disability is that like everybody else, like every... Uh, like everyone else around us, we are a diverse people. It's part of the reason why, um, so very recently there was an event uh, with the American Council for the Blind where they did not show enough support for their LGBTQ plus uh, affiliate um, and their members because their convention unfortunately is in Florida. I'm using this as an example, but the converse, the uh, convention in of the ACB, the American Council for the Blind, and the NFB, the National Federation for the Blind, are both in Florida. And uh, there was recently a conflict where um, the there was an affiliate. My understanding is that there was an, uh, an uh, one of their affiliates asked to for them to show them some some support, uh, and they wanted to do something to uh, to show that they uh, they supported the queer community because at the end of the day florida has unfortunately become an unsafe place its governor has uh, put out some laws that make it unsafe for queer people to be there or to even just generally speaking exist in florida um and some very very harmful uh bills and laws have been passed and originally the acb said yes that they would support it but uh, very uh, very randomly kind of back down and if you are interested in this there is uh, a there is a podcast episode for living blindfully that goes into this and that they, they have like the interviews it's, a, it's an entire two-hour episode about this kind of and um so like everyone else we we are a uh we are diverse in the things that we in how we in in how we are and unfortunately that i think that places like the acb the nfb the thing is that because there is diverse um there are a lot of diverse people the thing is that they have yet to maybe con they don't always it seems like 
my uh, my um, interpretation looking as an outsider. They haven't fully considered intersectionality. And that's one of the things to also consider when uh, when uh, uh, looking at the when looking at those at those things um, at any representation. We are a diverse uh, we are a diverse people, just like everybody else, and we need those diversity that diversity representation as well. So that is going to be that is something I just wanted to kind of clear up. Other things. Unfortunately, the book for The Voice in My Dreams is not out right now. I am still editing and uh, it will actually be a two-part romance. Also, it will not be under a pen name. I ended up having to uh, change that plan for accessibility reasons. And finally, it will be on Kindle Unlimited rather than wide this time. I'm trying to take advantage of a, a third option of income. <laughs> I am an author, but I'm also a publisher, and I need to uh, I need to have something that may work, that may or may not work. And if it brings something in that way, I think it's a good idea. And it may it may only be for ninety days, and then I'll put I'll put it wide. I'm not sure yet, but for now. It is a, uh, I, I'm, I'm putting it on Kindle Unlimited and it'll be under my name. Um, that is the idea for my romance books right now. Anywho, uh, those are kind of the updates. Please remember not to rely on my schedule for a review. I will not be reviewing Misery next. Actually, the next book I will be reviewing is uh, Beach Read. From what I saw, that was that's the next one in the, uh, in the files. So I'll be reviewing Beach Read next. Uh, so fi uh, yes, we're going to be reviewing a, re a good romance after this disaster. I'm very happy about that. I know this was a long review, but I hope that you enjoyed this conversation and that it gave you um, some ideas about how to add representation uh, in your in your books. I, for one, um, I, for one, always have at least one blind main character in my writing without failure my debut fantasy book uh daughter of death which you should absolutely check out has um a blind uh adult woman she's a mom and um yeah while she is a side character i i, I don't i will i would never uh you know pretend she's not an independent woman because she is she's an adult woman and she knows what she's doing so she's a blind mom. Um, in The Voice in My Dreams, the lead, it is a sapphic romance and the lead is blind as well. We have a sighted and a blind lead, but we have, you know, we have a, a blind character. I have a, I have other uh, projects I'm working on and there is a, and one of them, <laughs> I have a blind witch. So like, yeah. And you know what? Yes. In one of those stories, I'm going to have her flying a broom because why not? It's my story. It is fantasy. I'm doing it. So yeah, you know, there should, under no circumstances, I think, uh, should there be an excuse not to have representation. And fantasy is the perfect, it's one of the perfect places to do it. So I, I just want, I, yeah, like, you know, I, I have, I do have um, characters that way. And in the poems I have shared, in my uh, in my channels some of the poems i have written about uh blindness before um you can find a few that are related to blindness one of them literally is the truth of blindness you can find those poems and you can absolutely find some of the uh tales in my poetry as well i i um i think it's important to discuss disability and i think poetry and fiction are some of the best ways to do it so i i yeah that's that those are my those are my stances anyway if you uh are new um hello and welcome to the channel if not welcome back but uh this is this kind of ranting is very normal this is a hobby but i hope you enjoyed this episode of blind reviews um i am your host anexis matos i am a blind author content creator and freelancer subscribe if you are interested in more content from me um i am attempting to post very often but i don't um i don't promise anything <laughs> i am a little bit uh 
I'm a little bit busy in, in the middle of, tra of transitioning to a few things. So yeah, anywho, uh, so sorry if you're interested in more content. If you would like to see my writing, check out my website linked in the description. You can find my blog, you can see reviews, you can see, um, you can see some creative work such as poetry and creative nonfiction and the first draft of a book I'm working on. Um, so you can see that work in progress. You can also uh, check out my books. It's a great way to support me. Um, you can check out my Kofi page where you can actually find them in my shop, uh, but in also make a, a donation or, uh, uh, oh, what is that called? <laughs> um, or commission me for a, a service, but uh, you can check out my books. I, again, I have a debut fantasy, Daughter of Death. If fantasy short stories are your thing, that's the way to go and you should check it out. Uh, and you should check it out because the second book in that series, because it is part of a, it is my debut, but it is also the uh, first book in the Child of Death series. The second book, The Beginning of Us, is coming soon. I am currently in the process of editing and hope to get it to you by next year. But if poetry is your vibe, I do, I did recently release my debut poetry collection, Pieces of Me, available in all major retailers, as well as my shop. Uh, the poetry collection is only currently available in ebook format. However, when I have an audiobook format, I will absolutely let you know. Um, but you can find those. Daughter of Death is not on Amazon, but Pieces of Me is. Uh, but it's still available in a, in a lot of the major retailers. So check it out. Um, check them out. And if you are interested in my services, I offer poetry writing and beta reading. Feel free to commission me on coffee on Kofi. Coffee, <laughs> Kofi. Uh, you can also uh, check out the. Uh, you can also message me beforehand with any questions. If Kofi is not your thing, message me on Instagram with any questions as well as um, um, if you're looking for uh, one of my services. My Instagram, along with a bunch of other stuff, will be linked in the description. Please check it out, um, and I will see you. That's all I have for you today. So I will see you in my in the next episode of this uh again for beach read uh i'm so excited to have finally reviewed this because i needed to yell about this <laughs> um and i wanted to make sure we have a uh yeah. yeah okay anyway that is all i have for you today thank you so much for watching happy reading and consume stories bye